Hey, what's going on everybody? And a warm welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we look at the bourbons and whiskeys to look out for in the month of May. Run that video. Hey, what is going on fellow whiskey lovers of the internet? We are back with another whiskeys to look out for for the month of May. So I can't believe that we're doing for the month of May already. It just felt like we were doing January just like last month. However, time moves fast, it doesn't stand still, that's for sure. So with summer right around the corner, we're well underway in spring here now. So we're seeing a lot of spring releases here from a lot of these bigger distillers who generally do stuff in spring, early summer. Uh, we have some really exciting bottles to talk about here today. And also another shout out, we did this last time as well. So if you're someone who's involved in maybe a craft distillery or some smaller operation, message me uh, via email, link is in down in the description. And I would love to include one craft distillery every month when we do these it's just a way to kind of spread or just share the love there's not much that I can do on my own but I do want to try to do something at least so let me know let's try to connect and let's see if we can get you on the whiskey cove there with that being said let's jump into the whiskeys to log out for for the month of May so we're going straight down to Claremont Kentucky and we're going to Jim Beam because they are dropping a new bottle here some of you may have been lucky enough or fortunate enough be able to find it already so that is going to be the knob creek seven year rye yes they do the knob creek nine year which is a very popular uh, i wouldn't say budget bourbon but definitely around the 30 dollar mark so potentially budget uh this one the knob creek nine it's going to carry a uh, knob creek rye seven years going to carry a seven year age statement msrp is going to be 36.99 so for a seven year rye and this is coming in 100 proof of 50 percent abv Right off the bat, that sounds like excellent value for money. When we get it, I'll hopefully, I'm, this is the bottle I'm definitely gonna look for and try. I'm definitely gonna see how this stacks up to something like the Elijah Craig Rye that was dropped a couple of years ago to see kind of how well it stacks up. Maybe the Sazerac Rye, maybe we can have a bit of a Rye blind here. So, Knob Creek, which is owned by Jim Bean, going to talk a little bit about this release. They say, um, they say that the seven year age statement is a testament to the craftsmanship, patience and care behind its super premium whiskey and reinforces the brand's dedication to producing world class whiskeys for its fans. And speaking of the fans, we definitely like its 36.99 MSRP. And then a quote here. Uh, my dad Booker, no, created Knob Creek with the intention of crafting a full flavored whiskey without shortcuts. The Knob Creek has continued to set that standard for more than 30 years. So Knob Creek has been around for more than 30 years, which is insane if you think about it. And this was Fred No, uh, Booker's son and seventh generation master distiller. He said, we are excited to continue his legacy. And with this, the addition of the age statement to Knob Creek Rye Whiskey, I'm excited for whiskey fans to taste it. and know my dad will be proud. So this rye has been around, it hasn't carried the seven year age statement. What I was able to find is that it used to come in at around about three to seven years, always a blend or a mix of that. But now with that seven year age statement, they're saying that there's at least seven years of age in this distillate that is in the bottle there. So I think very aggressively priced in a good way. Great proof for rye, 50% of it would be 100 proof. And I think that this, I'm hoping, that this will be a really good rye, and I'm hoping that like, it'll be as good as something like a Rittenhouse rye, Saz rye, uh, Elijah Craig rye, or even better. I'm really excited about that. So that was the Knob Creek seven year. So next up, we're going down to Lux Row in Kentucky, and it is that time of the year where Lux Row releases one of its flagship whiskies, and that is, of course, the Blood Oath series. We are up to Blood Oath 9 now, which stuff is moving quite fast with this as well. And this is going to be a T Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finishing Ola Rosso sherry casks. We'll talk a little bit more about those Ola Rosso sherry casks towards the end here. So Blood Oath go on to say, and we can look at the label here on the screen, a masterful union of two well uh, bred bourbons and one finished bourbon, starting with an oaky 16 year old that tastes with, uh, that teases with brown sugar and a spicy anise. Um, and then it goes on to say that they also have a 12 year old uh, which tastes of leather and vanilla and has a nose of fresh honey and caramel flavors. And then a seven year old finished in Spanish or also sherry casks. Uh, which gives off a, like a sweet sherry whilst also hitting the palate with a dark fruit molasses chocolate and tobacco uh, salute it goes on to say so this is going to be coming in at uh, let's have a look here 49.3 percent alcohol or 98.6 proof 
The MSRP on this I feel like has jumped because this can be coming in at $129.99. I'm not sure how I feel about this whiskey, if I'm completely honest. Yes, we see that it has a blend between 16, 12, and seven year old whiskies. I wasn't able to find how much of each, so we don't quite know what we're getting. But when it comes to Blood Oaths, I like what they do. They, they normally put out quite a sophisticated product. And I think maybe it's just where I'm at right now when it comes to sherry finished bourbons and, and rice. It's just. It doesn't, it's not something that really blows me away if I'm completely honest. I think we've, we've had so much of them right now. I'm not saying that the market has completely moved on for them because when it comes to scotch, uh, they've been aged in sherry casks for the longest time. So this is something we can continuously see. However, it doesn't get me excited. That's not to say that this won't be a hit of a whiskey. And for folks out there who like sherry finished stuff, then this might be for you. Uh, it would be nice if it, it maybe like, uh, um, if it was finished in like a different type of sherry cask finish, like a uh, Jimenez instead of uh, Oloroso, but hey, we're just pulling straws with that. But this isn't one I'm going to be picking up for the price tag, uh, sadly, but definitely someone at home will definitely be looking out for this whiskey. And what I will also mention here with the Blood Oaths is that what I read is that they do the three pack releases every so often, so one, two, three, four, five, six and then this new next three pack is going to be seven eight and nine and that will be coming early 2024 so if you're someone who likes those three packs then definitely look out for that in 2024. so then moving on to the next whiskey and that is chicken cock whiskey one of america's oldest brands recently debuted a double oak kentucky whiskey which is what we're looking at today so this chicken cock double oak whiskey again they're kind of i wouldn't say that they're jumping on the double oak bandwagon because this is here to say stay and the stats back that up too because the double whiskey market has grown a considerable amount whereas the whiskey market or the bourbon market in general has just only grown one percent in the last year from what i've read the the double oaked market has gone up 18 percent and then the overall whiskey category growth has gone up one percent so there's definitely plenty of room in this market for distilleries to get into so what i was reading uh with chicken cock they went on to say you can't have great whiskey without great wood and this expression is the perfect marriage of age and wood said uh matty Anit antila excuse me if i haven't got that right founder of grain and barrel spirits which owns chicken cock whiskey that's why we aged our eight year whiskey in american oak barrels twice this process allows us to extract all the great flavor and the oak to create a robust and intriguing sipper that's likely not to last long on shelves, potentially, but with this price tag, it might last a little bit longer than they want to. Because it is available nationally at retail or online, you can go into Chicken Cock's website and then you can try to order it from there. Or alternatively, Casca's or Reserve Bar. And then the suggested retail price for this is gonna come in at $100 which is quite expensive for a double oak product. I think 1910 by Old Forester, Elijah Craig, and Mick does if you can find it. You usually jump, generally comes in between 50 and $70. So I feel like uh, Chicken Cock is jumping up the price more so to the whiskey we saw last month, and that is the Peerless Double Oak. So I'm hoping that this isn't too much of a, a push in the market to see a lot of these double oaked whiskeys coming up higher in price to 100 bucks because uh, that would be a real shame so i hope that's not a trend that's going um, so that was chicken cock double oaked whiskey so then next up we're going to go to green river distillery they are bringing out two new releases the first one is going to be kentucky straight wheated bourbon coming in at 90 percent uh, 90 proof 45 percent abv the mash bill on this wheated bourbon is going to be 70 percent uh, kentucky corn 21 percent wheat and then nine percent malted six row barley so the website goes on to say here, the Green River Kentucky Street Weedy Bourbon leads with a beautiful peach and caramel aroma coupled with apricot and cinnamon. Personal with flavor on the palate, you will find toffee, pastry, and hazelnut that guide towards a honeyed finish that's smooth and well balanced. So what's really good about this release of this weeded bourbon is that it, it's 35 bucks, which is excellent value for me. I love to see new releases that have really priced their whiskey aggressively because this is gonna be competing, I assume, with Bernheim seven year. And I think it would be good to do a taste comparison between the two. This Kentucky Straight Bourbon whiskey, I will be looking to get, hopefully the distribution coming to Colorado and I'll be able to pick that up. So the second one that they're also doing is a single barrel foolproof. 
So the single barrel expressions that they'll be doing all their full proof will be coming in at a 59.5% ABV, hence the full proof. A limited number of single barrels will be available annually for purchase by the barrel to select on and off premises retailers. Each retailer will be able to hand select the unique and single barrel on site. So they'll be able to go down to Lewisville and select them at the historic Green River Distillery. Uh, I think it's Lewisville or Owensville, one of the two down in Kentucky. This will be a, uh, priced a little bit higher. Our MSRP will be $59.99. So expect to see a lot of, uh, it sounds like you won't see the full proof sitting on shelves. You'll see it probably come in as like a single barrel pick by retailers, restaurants, and bars alike. So that will be an interesting one and expect some uniqueness between the two because it is single barrel as well. I also did make a note for that this year for those who don't know is that recently last year Bardstown Bourbon announced that they had agreement to acquire Green River. So now Green River uh, which are known to produce a lot of distillate in Kentucky are now owned by another big company or big well I guess you can call the company at this point who make a lot of whiskey and that is Bardstown. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes, that relationship goes and kind of Bardstown a bourbon company kind of taking over a little bit down there. So that was the Kentucky Straight Wheated Bourbon and Single Barrel Proof from Green River there. Next up, we have Wolves with their new release and that is gonna be the Malted Barley series. So Wolves Bourbon or Wolves Whiskey, they do a bunch of stuff lately. I've seen them a lot. Uh, they kind of almost look a little bit like the Willet Rye bottles, if I'm completely honest. Not the bottle itself, but like the design and labeling. They're a little bit more stumpier, like the Baker 7 bottles. So you might see them sitting on shelves a lot, and they consider themselves a bit of a, a luxury brand. I've never tried them, so I can't quite speak to that, but their marketing definitely uh, pushes it in that way. So on their website, Wolves is what they call themselves, the luxury whiskey brand founded by culture mavericks James Bond, I guess that were the license to kill, right? And John Buscemi uh, announced that the first ever single malt release whiskey is lot one under the brand Malted Barley Series banner. So this whiskey, they said, is a definition of American single malt whiskey and has long been a moving target. In 2022, however, the Tax and Trade Bureau proposed new parameters of what will require in part that to be classified as an American single malt, which is why they're not calling it an American single malt, they're calling it the malt, uh, malted barley. Because I guess uh, when they originally done the distillate, the parameters to be called an American single malt were different. And then the, uh, the TTB, the uh, Tax and Trade Bureau changed that. So they had to kind of pivot a little bit with that there. So then they also go on to say that uh, they acquired eight to 12 barrel lots starting in 2011. So you can put this out at about 12 year whiskey. And then they aged uh, or they distilled it over a 10 day period there. Uh, and then they, uh, with an Albec pot still imported from Cognac in France in 1983. While still far less efficient than a column still, the slow antique pot still yields whiskey with more body flavor and viscosity. I haven't actually heard much about an alembic distill process or dis, uh, like a cost still, but uh, I, I'm guessing I have to kind of look up on it now because you know different distilleries are trying to improve or do something a little bit different think like a solera system a pot still system and now an alembic i need to kind of look what that's about there so with this whiskey uh, it, it does go on to talk a little bit about the price for this bottle and i did mention that it was a luxury brand or the luxury branding is going to come with a luxury price i guess and the msrp on this guy will be 350 dollars so it says all 220 bottles of Wolves Lot 1 single barrel expression will be offered privately to certain members on its allocation list. However, the 375 six, six packs of the Lot 1 blended single malt expression, which will have an MSRP of $289, will be made available through select retailers as well as pre-sale purchases uh, at wolveswhiskeyca.com. So it does come with that luxury price tag. You can see the bottle on the screen. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's, it doesn't really set the world alight. It doesn't strike me as something that necessarily says premium. However, uh, for those folks at home who might have tried this uh, whiskey before, you might like this a lot and this might be a whiskey for you there. But I think for me personally, I'm going to pass, but I haven't tried the distillate with this one. Uh, and then also let's move on to another premium whiskey in a way i guess and that is going to be old fits 17 year bourbon so this is going to be the old fits spring release for 2023 
Um, that is going to and that is going to be coming in 100 proof, 50% ABV because that is bottled in bond. And it says that it was distilled and barreled somewhere within the fall of 2004 and bottled and released uh, in the spring of 2023, carrying a 17-year age statement. And also, so when I was doing the research for this, it also said that uh, the green label represents the whiskies or the, the releases in spring, and then the black labels mean the fall release, which I didn't know about that. And I guess that kind of makes sense up there because I have two of them up there, fortunately. And also some interesting facts about this one here, the mash bill on this all fits is going to be 68% corn, 20% wheat, and then 12% malted barley. Uh, it is, like I said, 17 year age statement. It's going to be about gold and amber in color. And then it, this is coming out of Heaven Hills Bernheim Distillery, where they do a lot of their wheated stuff. I think Larceny and Bernheim whiskey there. So really interesting bottle of whiskey if you're able to get a hold of it. Don't forget folks at home, enter those lotteries, put those tickets in, be on the hustle, talk to people, make relationships. Hopefully one day we might, hopefully one day you might be able to score one of these amazing bottles here. So that was Old Fitz 17. And then lastly, we have a couple of honorable mentions i guess if you like so it is that time of the year when elijah craig barrel proof and lastly barrel proof will be putting out their b batch for me notoriously the b batch has probably been my favorite followed closely by c and they will be dropping that year msrp will be about uh, 70 to 80 dollars the price slowly gets is creeping up i wasn't able to find the abv for these but just expect it to be in the region of very high 50s to uh very high 60s is generally where these sit at. And then also Traverse City are producing a three bottle release here. We're gonna have a port finish, we're gonna have a sherry finish, and then we're gonna have a crab, a cab franc barrel finish. So the port is gonna be 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. The franc barrel is gonna be 100% rye, uh, and then the sherry barrel is gonna be 60% corn, 36% rye, and then 4% malted barley. Aged between five and six years, so aged about five years, finish for about another extra year as well. And the price on this is gonna be $60, $59.99, which is pretty decent for the most part. You're getting a 50% ABV with the port, you're getting 48% with the franc barrel, and then you're getting, I wasn't able to find, I think, no, no, never mind. It was 50% then for the sherry finish. So you're getting a decent amount of ABV and a really nice finish, not the highest age in the world, but I think five to six years is solid for this. So for $60, I would put it in, uh, in a classification with kind of like some of the rabbit hole stuff there. So if you like those sort of releases, then you'll probably like this too. And you can buy them online at tcwhiskey.com when they are released. So hopefully you stayed the course here. Hope you enjoy these whiskeys to look out for. And thank you to the subscribers out there. I continually keep getting impressed. If you haven't, please do so as we continue to make this community grow as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time. Cheers.